Okay, <clears throat> this is a, another strip down and repair video, uh, but I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to um, demonstrate that um, you don't actually need to spend a fortune to get some really cool retro tech. Um, this is a uh, Technics um, SHE60 stereographic equaliser. I think this uh, dates from about 1982, something like that. <clears throat> and I bought this off eBay for Fifteen pounds. That is about nineteen dollars. Um, it was listed as completely dead, wouldn't power up, but uh, cosmetically it was in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of rubbing to the graphics on the front here, and there's a small scratch on the back of the lid there. But other than that, it's 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 pretty clean. And I thought for that amount of money, it was probably uh, worth a shot. Maybe we can get it working. So um, these things are fairly simple. Um, <clears throat> basically you've just got <coughs> uh, line in line out a couple of jacks for a remote control uh, and an AC out socket um, and then on the front we have as you can see I think uh, graphic sliders and um, a equalizer on off button and a power standby button um, uh, I think these are one, two, three, four Yes, seven band uh, graphic equaliser for the channel. I'm not particularly interested in the equaliser part of the unit. It's the spectrum analyzer and displays. Uh, and the this particular unit has some very nice uh, the vacuum fluorescent displays, which are if you're an old fart like me, um, uh, I really do like those kind of displays. So um, okay, well, I mean that's the that's the that's the unit as it is. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is basics. Take this apart and see whether or not uh, it's wired up correctly. Is there a fuse in it? If there is, um, is the fuse okay? Uh, if it's not, place it before we even go to uh, have a look inside. Well, mains plug's fine. Fuse is alright. So now it's time to have a quick look inside. So let's just take the lid off. Um, first thing I always do when I'm doing this sort of work is visual inspection and check for any debris inside the actual unit. Uh, so you can see that it's fairly straightforward. One main PCB, uh, and uh, there's a PCB on the front which has got the displays on. Um, so uh, we're going to have a quick look, see whether or not there's any damage that I can see that's obvious. This is naked eye type stuff. Um, burnt resistors, bulging capacitors, that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll uh, put power on and check that the mains is actually getting up to the transformer on the board here. Okay, uh, mains is getting to the transformer um, and we've got AC voltages coming off. So that's, that's all looking good. I've unplugged it, there's no power on it at all now. And now I'm going to use a very uh, high-tech piece of diagnostic equipment. Yep, the finger. Most of us have these and they're really, really useful. And what I'm going to do is um, very gently uh, touch and see if I can move uh, the components which are protruding from the board. Particularly these two power transistors here and here, you can see that. And this, which I think is a voltage regulator here. Um, and I've actually already fixed this, so uh, I know that these are going to be fine. But when I did this the first time, um, one of these power transistors was fine. The other one was loose in the board, and I could actually wiggle it backwards and forwards. So it obviously wasn't soldered in properly. And the same was uh, the same uh, effect was found with this voltage regulator. It was just completely loose in the board. It was flopping around all over the place. So <clears throat> uh, those. Uh, two things need to be made note of and when we flip the circuit board over that's the very first thing that we'll be having a look at but that's obviously a problem um, and the next thing I'm going to do is use another high-tech bit of um, di diagnostic equipment and we'll zoom out from the board so you can see that let me focus and that is one of these now, <clears throat> this is 
Bench magnifier. Illuminated. Uh, worth its weight in gold. Now these can cost you an awful lot of money, but I actually picked this one up from my local uh, Maplin store and I think I paid about £25 for it. So that's not a lot of money and it's paid for itself over and over again because you need to use this to go over the board and have a real close look at everything on there um, looking for uh, again damage burn marks any heat anywhere um, and this will reveal stuff that you very definitely cannot see with your naked eye so we'll do that next okay well I've been all over the board with the magnifier and it all looks pretty good the only real uh, suspect component I can find is this resistor here. This isn't the original, I've actually, actually changed it. But that, um, that definitely looked like it was, uh, has had some heat damage. Um, but everything else, everything else looked fine. So um, now it's time to uh, flip the board over. Uh, basically you've just got, um, I think it's four screws and uh, two that hold the transformer in. Then there's a couple of screws that hold the uh, front panel on and you can flip the whole lot over. Uh, allowing you easy access to the back of the board. Um, the first problem was this power transistor, um, which we uh, I had three completely cracked solder joints. It was totally loose. Um, so we used a bit of um, uh, solder brake, uh, clean up the pads, clean up the legs, uh, check the pads are okay. There's no damage to the PCB and there wasn't. So resolder the power transistor. So that was all good to go. I don't really know what was going on with this five volt regulator. I mean, it was just someone had made a horrendous job of trying to solder it into the board, and it was just it was soldered all over the place, and it was just it was just uh, hanging by a thread on a, on one of the legs. The other two weren't even making it. It was just a mess. So again, solder braid, clean it all up, check the tracks and the pads on the board, which were all fine, and then uh, resolder it back into the board. Um, and everything else had uh, did an inspection using the magnifier on the PCB, and it all looked fine. So um, flip it back over, uh, power it back on again, and uh, still dead. Absolutely nothing. That, that would have been way too easy. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, it's just now time to start pro probing around with the old multimeter. And uh, this is a very uh, simple uh, linear uh, power supply. Um, AC voltage coming off of the uh, transformer there. There are four diodes. I don't know whether the camera can, you can see it. Probably can't see them. There's four diodes here arranged as a bridge rectifier. They give us a positive and a plus and minus uh, line voltages of uh, plus 37 volts and minus 37 volts. That then feeds into these power transistors and they give us a plus and minus 12 volts and that was all there, that was all good, that, that was fine. Um, so the plus and minus 12 volts is fine. So then we go over to the regulator. Uh, it's a 7805, a uh, very common uh, one amp voltage regulator used in almost all sorts of things those are. are. Um, check the output, nothing. Check the input, nothing. Uh, well that's obviously not right. So. Um, I don't have a circuit diagram for this. Um, I've got an, a PCB uh, overlay, uh, but I don't have the, the diagram. So basically trace the circuit through and the input to the 5 volt regulator is fed through uh, from the plus 37 volt rail through a resistor, that one, what a surprise, uh, and this little chap down here, which is a Zener diode. Uh, use the multimeter to check the Zener diode in board. I know that's not a particularly reliable way of checking uh, diodes, but it looked reasonably okay. This, uh, the original uh, one of those, that was open circuit. So that was why we weren't getting any, any voltage out of the, the regulator. Unfortunately, because the dio the resistor had, had suffered some heat damage, you can't rely on the color code anymore to tell you what it is because when these resistors get hot, the, color, the colors on the bands can change. I was fairly certain it started with 47, but as for the rest of it, I just couldn't really make, make, it, make out what it was. And obviously it was open circuit, so you can't measure it. So, so these things need uh, a small amount of current to work. Um, so I thought, well, we're on the side of caution and I put a 4.7K resistor in to start with. Turn it on. Uh, now it's still nothing on the front panel. Um, however, there was a small amount of voltage now coming out of the um, out of the regulator. So that's we're on the right track. So I dropped it down to a 470 ohm resistor and all of a sudden the uh, left hand channel, this one here, sprang into life, uh, lit up and so did the, uh, the EQ light on the front. Um, so that was a good sign. Um, measured the voltage on the regulator. We got a good five volts coming out of the regulator now, so that all seems to be working. 
um, I put a signal in on the left channel and sure enough the uh, display bounced up and down exactly as it's supposed to um, and the equalizer sliders were all working so I think we can be fairly sure that the power supply is now fixed um, and we move on to the next problem which is why is the right hand display still dead so uh, that's what we'll be looking at next okay so <coughs> now it's time to um, turn our attention to the um, display board um, it was fairly easy to take it apart there's a couple of screws that hold this front panel in and then um, there was I think one two or three screws two I think that hold the, the, the PCB to, to this the black panel surround and then there's these clips and then you can remove the, remove the panel. So I basically did the same thing again. Looked, uh, give it a good going over with the magnifier, looking for um, any obvious damage. There was no heat damage that I could tell. Um, no, there were. I couldn't see any um, initially any solder joints. Um, but uh, when I was uh, I was I, I, pushing down on the on the displays from the front, and they are soldered into the board along here. These are the pins for the display. And there. Uh, and I noticed that the non-working uh, right-hand channel, this end of the display, um, moved very slightly when I pressed down on it. And then when I looked on the other side of the board, these two joints here were coming away from, the pins were coming away from the board. Um, and I, I hadn't seen it when I looked with the magnifier. I went and had another look, and there were some hairline cracks all the way around each one of the joints. Uh, and you just couldn't see it until you moved them away. So again, solder braid, Clean, cleaned up the, uh, the the pads and the, and the pins, checked the pads were okay, resoldered them, powered it back up, and sure enough, the right hand channel came up, fed some signals in, and it was all working. So, as I said, basically what we had was a uh, a fairly um, a fairly simple fix. Um, we didn't require any uh, complex um, uh, tools, just a multimeter, uh, magnifier, uh, solar iron. And um, I now have a perfectly working uh, graphic equaliser. Okay, well, here it is in action. You just gotta love those vacuum fluorescent displays, they are simply gorgeous.